everybody, this is Praxis, and we're finally up here so I can show you what I've been doing in terms of sanding the floors. If you look to your right, you can see an area I've already done. If you look to your left, it's the area I've yet to do. And you can see there's a pretty clear line of demarcation right down the middle. Uh, the goal here is to get the boards so that they're nice and smooth and even uh, so that after, uh, the idea is after I do this sanding run, I'm going to put down some stain and then I'm going to do a light sanding run afterwards. And I want to make sure that they're nice and smooth so that when I do the light sanding run, I'm not really grinding down any areas of boards and really taking away too much stain because the second sanding run is just uh, there to kind of lightly take up some of the stain to get you a little bit more contrast. And this is the run where I want to really take down the wood, get it all nice and smooth. So that's what I'm working on right now, but it kind of kills me to be doing a job like this right now because, as you know, I'm trying to get into the house you know, before the winter and something like this, theoretically, you could do once you move in. You don't have to have the floors smooth and sanded to get an occupancy permit, but I just know from experience that if you don't do a job like this right now, you're not going to want to do it later because it's so, so messy. You don't want to have your bed and your oven and your refrigerator and your books and everything else in the house and then be running a three-inch belt sander. And you can see just how much dust this thing throws down. So I'm doing it now, and I'm trying to do it as quickly as I can, but it takes some time. The, uh, the space between these two windows right here on the floor, that was an hour right there. I don't know how it takes an hour to do this. I'm going to show you at the end of this video you know, the actual process, and you can kind of get a sense of it. But uh, you know, it takes some time. Using the 3-inch belt sander is not the fastest way to do it, but I decided to use this sander because renting one of those big uh, whole floor sanders, which are super easy to use and I presume pretty quick, uh, is really expensive. It's like $200, $250 to rent it for a couple of days. And like I said, the way that this is going to go down is I need to sand the entire floor and then stain it. And then you have to wait for the stain to dry for a couple of days. And then I'm going to have to go through and sand the whole thing again. So I, I have to be in for two rentals. That'd be like almost $500. You could buy a couple of these for that cost. And that's what I chose to do, except for the fact that my dad happened to have one and have borrowing this one for free. So thank you, dad, for letting me borrow this. If you buy one of these yourself, you, uh, you should know that they come in different widths. Three in it's usually three inch, sometimes four inch uh, widths. And the belts have different circumferences. And it's sort of like buying a printer. You want to make sure that you, know, you don't buy a printer and then find out that the ink is super expensive. Check out, if you're going to buy one of these, what the belts cost, because you wouldn't want to buy a model and then find out that your belts are 10 times more expensive than some other one that you could have gotten. So think about it ahead of time if you're ever going to get one of these. Let me show you the procedure for doing this, and not surprisingly, wearing PPE. I'm not going to make the usual gags about how people are stupid and they don't wear PPE. It's a good idea if you're in a dusty or a virus-laden environment or anything like that, protect your lungs. You only have two of them. I'm also wearing hearing protection because I only have two ears and this thing makes some high-pitched noises. Now you'll notice when I'm doing this, I'm going to do a swirling pattern because this thing can really grind into the floor and I don't want to do that. As you can see here, I'm, I'm just taking it down to a point where it kind of has a natural look to it. I, I don't want to you know, completely strip off the top. That would take a lot of time and it's unnecessary. So I'm just going to do a light pattern and do uh, swirls changing over different areas so I don't get any hard edges. Here we go. So I'm taking this one down, and this one hasn't even really been touched yet. So what I'm going to do is kind of keep, keep doing this until this edge softens, and they kind of join each other. And it's going to take as much time as it takes. Board. So this one's getting taken down, and I'm just starting to hit the edges of this board. And uh, I, one other thing I know is you're noticing I'm at a bit of an angle. Normally when you would sand, you'd sand with the grain. Uh, but I found that as I was sanding with the grain, I'd hit the edges of the boards, and it just wasn't working really well. Doing it at a bit of an angle helps to kind of smooth out the edges as I'm going. It creates a little bit of a cross grain, but that doesn't bother me, and I'm going to be doing another sanding run over this. Uh, well, you can stick around as long as you like. I'm just going to see if I can take these. 